on World News Tonight. Vamos Argentina! Lionel Messi cements his place among the greats after winning epic duel against Kylian Mbappe. Pacific tensions. North Korea fire more missiles prompting Japan and South Korea to strongly condemn the launch. Border emergency. The Texas border declares a state of emergency as tens of thousands of migrants expected to cross over. And nation victorious. Crowds cheer on as they claim to have witnessed the greatest World Cup final in history. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. Lionel Messi finally achieved his World Cup dream as Argentina won their third crown on penalties in one of the greatest finals in the tournament's history. Argentina won the shootout 4-2 after a spectacular game which developed into the much-anticipated confrontation between the 36-year-old maestro Messi and his France opposite number Kylian Mbappe. There were smiles all around for Argentina soccer fans as they jumped, danced and shouted outside of the Lucille Stadium in Qatar following Argentina's third World Cup win. For these supporters, it was an extraordinary final, with Argentina beating France 4-2 on penalties after Lionel Messi scored twice in a 3-3 draw. It's a party. It's a party. We have football in our blood, and the most important thing is that Messi has the cup and he will bring it to Argentina. After his record 26th World Cup match, 35-year-old Messi claimed the trophy his nation coveted, elevating him alongside Diego Maradona, Argentina's first football god who carried them to their last World Cup triumph in 1986. Fireworks burst as Messi lifted the trophy in Sunday's post-match ceremony. In Argentina, fans crowded the streets of Buenos Aires, waving a giant flag along with many smaller ones as they rejoiced in the victory. But it was an entirely different scene in Paris. Many French soccer fans held their head in their hands after Argentina snatched the penalty shootout victory. And others, hoping to celebrate on the Champs-Élysées Avenue, headed home in disappointment. In Qatar, French President Emmanuel Macron told reporters, quote, I would like to tell everyone who is listening to us tonight and who are sad that I share their sadness, but we can be proud of this team. France's Kylian Mbappé became the second man ever to score a World Cup final hat trick. But it was Messi's name to be chanted outside of the stadium Where is Messi with the World Cup? as jubilant supporters relished the World Cup outcome. Meanwhile, a request by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to share a message of world peace prior to kickoff at the World Cup final had been rebuffed by the FIFA. The request, while unorthodox, is unsurprising, as Kiev had repeatedly tried to use major world events, regardless of their team, to keep the global spotlight on the war in Ukraine. Ahead of the final match of the 2022 Qatar World Cup, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday sent a video message to FIFA, asking it to be shown before the last game. In his one minute and 40 second video, Zelensky had hoped to share a message of peace to a global audience. Comparing the playing fields of a football match to the battlefield, he called for the need for fair play. In the video message, President Zelensky proposed holding a global peace summit this winter. He wanted a global audience to hear his call for the summit to unite all nations around the cause of world peace. This World Cup proved time and again that different countries and nationalities can decide who is the strongest in the fair play but not in the playing with fire, on the green playing field and not on the red battlefield. So I announce the initiative to hold a global peace formula summit this winter, the summit to unite all nations of the world around the cause of global peace. Stadiums, stands get empty after the match and after the war, cities remain empty. That's why wars must fail and peace is to become the champion as it is here in Qatar now. The World Cup, but not the World War. It is possible. Please support Ukraine in our efforts to restore peace. The video was not shown ahead of the final match on Sunday. CNN reported that FIFA, football's governing body, rejected the video on grounds that the message was too political and has since not responded to further requests for comment. 
The Ukrainian presidential office said that there was nothing political in the appeal, no subjective evaluations, political signals or accusations, adding that FIFA has lost its valuable understanding of soccer as a game that unites people. Meanwhile, Russia fired more than 70 missiles at Ukraine on Friday, knocking out power and forcing Kyiv to implement emergency blackouts nationwide. Russia has shelled the center of Kherson, the southern Ukrainian city. It retreated from last month in the latest in a barrage of attacks on the region. Three people were wounded in the assault on Kherson, one Ukrainian official said, while the regional governor Yaroslav Yanusevich said that Russia in the past day had launched 54 attacks with rocket, mortar and tank fire in the Kherson area, killing three people and wounding six. Some of the few remaining residents of Ukraine's frontline town of Avdivka briefly come out of their shelters to pick up food parcels. Pale and exhausted, they barely flinch at the sound of the constant shelling that echoes across the town, just 13 kilometers from Donetsk. Russian artillery also targeted the center of Kherson, the city it lost last month in one of the biggest setbacks for Moscow in Ukraine. Three people in the city were wounded. In Russia, the regional governor of Belgorod claimed one person was killed and several injured by missiles fired from Ukraine. It comes two days after attacks by Russia battered Ukraine's energy grid. Now, Russia's defense ministry has announced that the country's hypersonic avant-garde missile system is to be introduced into service. President Vladimir Putin claimed in 2018 that the intercontinental missile was invincible and that the weapon could hit any target on Earth within 30 minutes and travel at 27 times the speed of sound. Russia's defense ministry claims it has prevented the delivery of foreign weapons to Ukraine following Friday's barrage of missile strikes. Attacks that caused widespread power and water outages. In another statement, Moscow's avant-garde hypersonic missile system is now in service. Russian President Vladimir Putin says it can reach any target on Earth in less than 30 minutes. This follows a meeting with the commanders of Russia's armed forces on Friday. According to the Kremlin, Putin chairs the meeting alongside Russian Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chief of Russia's General Staff Valery Gerasimov. Meanwhile, in central Ukraine, rescue workers pulled the body of a toddler from the rubble of an apartment building early on Saturday morning. Authorities say three more people were killed in the strike and 13 others were injured. North Korea test fired a pair of ballistic missiles with a potential range of striking Japan on Sunday in a possible protest of Tokyo's adoption of a new security strategy to push for more offensive footing against North Korea and China. The launches came two days after the North claimed to have performed a key test needed to build a more mobile, powerful intercontinental ballistic missile designed to strike the U.S. mainland. North Korea fired two ballistic missiles towards the sea off the Korean peninsula's east coast on Sunday. That's according to South Korea and Japan. South Korea's presidential office strongly condemned Pyongyang for escalating tensions. The country's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the two medium-range missiles flew about 311 miles. Japan's Vice Defence Minister, Toshiro Ino, said the missiles appeared to have landed outside Japan's exclusive economic zone. North Korea's series of rapidly escalating provocations threatens the peace and security of Japan, the region and the international community and must not be tolerated. It violates the relevant Security Council resolutions and Japan has lodged a strong protest with North Korea through our embassy in Beijing and strongly condemned their actions. He added that there had been no report of damages. The North missile launch comes just days after the country tested a high-thrust, solid-fuel engine. Experts say it would allow for quicker and more mobile launches of ballistic missiles as it seeks to develop a new strategic weapon and speed up its nuclear and missile programs. North Korea has conducted an unprecedented number of missile tests this year, including an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the U.S. mainland, despite international bans and sanctions. In November, Japanese officials said North Korea test-fired an ICMB that landed just 130 miles off Japan. 
Japan on Friday unveiled its biggest military build-up since World War II. The $320 billion plan will buy missiles capable of striking China and ready it for sustained conflict. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. EU member states and parliamentarians on Sunday announced an agreement for a major reform to the bloc's carbon market, the central plank of its ambitions to reduce emissions and invest in climate-friendly technologies. The deal aims to accelerate emission cuts, phase out free allowances to industries and targets fuel emissions from the building and road transport sectors. EU member states have reached a political deal that will speed up carbon emission cuts and overhaul the bloc's carbon market. The Czech EU presidency said the agreement also aims to phase out free allowances on industries which are currently in place. The move will require 10,000 power plants and factories to buy CO2 permits when they pollute, in an effort to meet the EU's target to slash its net emissions 55% by 2030, compared with 1990s levels. This deal will up this percentage to 62% by 2030. Initially, the carbon tax will affect polluting industries and carbon emissions linked to production. However, the incentive will also be extended to the maritime sector, intra-European flights and waste incineration sites. If adopted by MEPs and the European Council, the initiative will allow industries to compete with more polluting non-EU rivals. Now, the mayor of a Texas border city declared a state of emergency Saturday over concerns about the community's ability to handle an anticipated influx of migrants across the southern border. El Paso Mayor Oscar Liza issued a state of emergency declaration to allow the city on the U.S. border with Mexico to tap into additional resources that are expected to become necessary after Title 42 expulsions end on December 21st. A state of emergency at the Texas border. The mayor of El Paso making the declaration late Saturday. Our asylum seekers are not safe as we have hundreds and hundreds on the streets. And that's not the way we want to treat people. He says more than 15,000 migrants have arrived in the last week. And now that number is expected to explode with a Trump era policy known as Title 42 set to be lifted on Wednesday. The public health rule implemented in March of 2020 in response to the COVID pandemic, making it easier to return hundreds of thousands of migrants to Mexico. Officials say the number of migrants attempting to cross the border could more than double daily, but border towns are already strained. Men, women and children fleeing violence and poverty, seeking asylum at this makeshift camp in downtown El Paso. Others seeking shelter at El Paso International Airport. Now, one final attempt by a group of Republican-led states to prevent a possible sudden surge of migrants. They're calling on the Supreme Court to intervene as soon as tomorrow. As Peru's former leader Pedro Castillo sits in jail, his supporters take to the streets of Lima amid years of tumultuous elections, ousted presidents and fury over a political system they deem to be run by the elite. Throngs of protesters, many from marginalized rural groups, spill onto the streets of Lima in support of an ousted president who campaigned on representing them. Voter anger has long bubbled close to the surface in Peru, which has seen six presidents in five years. Most former leaders have been jailed or investigated for corruption, but the situation has exploded in the last two weeks, as the fall of former president Pedro Castillo sparked deadly protests across the country. Castillo's recent ouster has fired up voters like this man, a farmer who traveled for three days to reach the capital, Lima, to march in support of Castillo. He said Castillo represents the people and wants him to be reinstated. Many of these protesters, some Castillo supporters and others simply angry, said they felt ignored by political leaders. But Castillo, a former teacher and son of peasant farmers, had at least been one of their own, they said, despite his many flaws. Now, the anger among many marginalized people is threatening to derail a fragile new government, with President Dina Bularte and a reviled Congress. Some Castillo supporters blame Bularte for protest deaths. They carry banners calling Bularte a murderer and demanding she resign. But the president on Saturday rejected that demand and implored Congress to bring forward elections. Solo estoy cumpliendo 
con el mandato constitucional. I'm only fulfilling my constitutional mandate. There's a group saying Dina stepped down. But what will be solved by my quitting? Is the problem solved? The problem won't be solved. We will be firm until Congress approves to bring forward elections. Castillo rose unexpectedly to the presidency last year on a wave of support from rural voters fed up with the status quo and what they saw as a corrupt Lima-based political elite. In a recent handwritten letter from jail, Castillo said, quote, I was chosen by the forgotten men and women of deep Peru, by the dispossessed who have been neglected for over 200 years. He's serving 18 months of pretrial detention while being investigated for alleged crimes of rebellion and conspiracy, which he denies. Tunisia's main opposition coalition has said President Kais Saied must resign after fewer than 9% of eligible voters took part in parliamentary elections. The National Salvation Front head Najib Shebi said Saturday's poll was a fiasco, calling for mass protests to demand snap presidential elections. Tunisia's main opposition coalition has called on President Kais Saied to resign after Tunisians overwhelmingly boycotted parliamentary elections. Fewer than 9% of eligible voters took part on Saturday, the lowest participation in any vote since the revolution in 2011. This election comes almost a year and a half after Saeed deployed military vehicles to suspend parliament, before then pushing through a constitution enshrining his one-man rule. Saeed denies accusations that he has undermined democracy, saying such action was needed to break the political deadlock and undo economic decay made worse by the pandemic. The electoral board president said the modest turnout could be explained by the absence of foreign financing in contrast to previous elections, claiming this was the cleanest election with no vote buying. The first results are expected on Monday. We have some good news for you. A recent study in South Korea has shown that scientists may be able to pre-diagnose the risk of dementia by measuring the thickness of a cellular fiber in our retina. The retina part of the eye plays an instrumental role in sensing light and delivering visual information to our brain. With aging, the retina becomes thinner, which leads to the weakening of its cognitive functions. It also results in various diseases in the macula, a part sitting at the center of the retina, eventually debilitating the vision. According to a South Korean research team, it turns out that Mr. Yu and his friends may be exposed to even bigger health problems. The team found out that the thickness of the macula is directly correlated to the risk of dementia. Their findings were discovered thanks to research on retina nerve fiber, an innermost cellular layer inside the macula. A cognitive study was conducted on 430 people aged over 60 over a five-year period. It turns out that the bottom 25 percent of the participants, those with thinner retina nerve fibers, had lower cognitive functions. Their functions also declined faster over time. When put into figures, seniors with thinner nerve fibers have a 52.7 percent higher chance of suffering from dementia, which is five times higher than those with thicker kinds. The team says it's meaningful as it's the nation's first discovery on this topic that's backed up with scientific evidence from large-scale group research. The discovery is expected to speed up progress to devising methods to diagnose and treat dementia. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Major Chinese cities remain quiet as people stayed home to protect themselves from a surge in COVID-19 cases that have resulted in two deaths. Thousands of people took to the streets in Belgian capital Brussels to protest against soaring costs of living as inflation rises across Europe. More than 16,000 people turned up the demonstration calling for a higher pay and a price cap on energy products. Thick, toxic smog engulfed New Delhi as the Indian capital's air quality index slipped to the very poor category, which largely decreased visibility and inconvenienced residents and tourists alike. Thailand's military deployed warships and helicopters to try to locate 33 marines missing after Corvette sank overnight in choppy waters in the Gulf of Thailand. Record snowfall slammed Russia's capital with dozens of flights in Moscow delayed or cancelled. Nearly 40 centimeters of snow fell on Sunday, the most on a single day in mid-December since 1989.
And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than the English. We're leaving you tonight with celebrations around the world for Team Argentina as the world witnessed the greatest World Cup final in history. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.